Hi, I'm Pam Walpole. I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself and my work. I trained as a commercial artist at QUT in Brisbane and worked in various advertising agencies as a graphic artist for 15 years. I then pursued a fine arts degree where I majored in sculpture, but painting was not one of my chosen subjects. Now I've been a practicing artist for nearly 40 years and during that time have had 16 solo exhibitions and many selected and group shows. I have entered and won awards and travelled overseas on an exchange program to South Korea and exhibited in Japan and Italy. I have been represented by galleries in Sydney and Melbourne, the Gold Coast, Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast. Bringing up a family, I created sculptures depending on the time and space my home allowed, but I also started to concentrate on painting. Grassy fields, mountains and general rural scenes. I entered competitions, art shows, and had my work in a couple of galleries in Brisbane, but I needed to develop my own style, my signature. I was a member of the Queensland Wildlife Artists Society, and we exhibited annually. My medium was charcoal. Bold drawings of various Australian animals like pelicans, possums, and emus, any animal that had character. All of these from life, as I was after an expressive free result. I would go to Lone Pine Reserve in Brisbane to sketch or the Noosa River for pelicans. An architect commissioned me to paint murals for the new wing of the Royal Brisbane Children's Hospital. Australian and native animals were the theme. It was a six month project for corridors, treatment rooms, wards and outpatients areas. This was my first sandstone carving. Uh, I always tended to do very curvaceous people, well-rounded. And I don't know why, but I didn't put faces on them either. I think there's some psychological thing there. I don't like my own face. So, so from the maquette I did of the water birds, I chose two of them to do a larger piece. Um, so I've used once again Hebel block and put it together with a slurry over it to cover up all the seams and then carved, carved some two beaks. So that's my cormorant and egret, stylized of course, an artistic interpretation. I joined the Society of Sculptors Queensland and they were a very enthusiastic group and we had an exhibition at QPAC, Queensland Performing Arts Centre and it was for one of their anniversaries. And this one uh, was very much influenced in those days by Brancusi. Very minimal, very simple. And this one won the sculpture prize. And so I made this originally in clay and made a silicon and plaster mold, and then I had it cast professionally. So, and then finished the patina. So it's one of my favorites still to this day. I tried all mediums from clay, resin and cast cement and wooden assemblage. Simplicity was the key to my sculptures. I was given a load of 80 year old industrial foundry patterns. These I assembled into various pieces, figures, fish and birds. I kept the original components and colours. Gradually I was spending more time painting and after an inspiring holiday to Vanuatu, I produced a series of works on paper in mixed media. Images of Paradise became my first solo exhibition. The colours and shapes of ropes and riggings, fishing nets and outriggers were what inspired me. Pamela Whitlock came along to my show. She was the curator of the Brisbane Civic Art Gallery in the City Hall at the time, and she purchased Wharf for the gallery. A small work on paper, quite dark, of a rundown waterside dwelling. Meeting her boosted my confidence, so her memorial prize has a lot more meaning to me. I sold three quarters of the exhibition, which was an excellent start to my first solo, but the 80s was a thriving art scene at the time. Collage was another direction for me, and I still love it. Reflections of Man was a series of torn paper, paint and ink drawing, 
pieces of driftwood, rusty metal or snake skin. Living in Brisbane at the time, I had an exhibition at Baguette Gallery, the Brisbane River Series. Once again, I was attracted to the broken jetties and structures along the riverfront. Composition to me is important. I definitely think working in advertising studios with talented designers rubbed off on me. In time, with a lot of looking and seeing, one develops an eye. I'm always aware of balance, contrast and various marks while still wanting to paint freely. I like to paint in an expressive semi-abstract way and yet still having something recognisable for the viewer. People will interpret a painting differently, of course, depending on how they see things and will often point out a shape that reminds them of something I hadn't seen. I am often asked if I work from photos. No, I don't as if I, I found they stiffen me up and get bogged down by the detail. But that's only because I'm striving for a more minimal semi-abstract approach. I often concentrate on just a small section of the landscape, like the close reflection on water. Depending on the piece, I use large brushes and vigorous bold strokes. It's all about the atmosphere and the mark making. I use acrylic as I'm too impatient waiting for oils to dry as I layer my paint. I often mix my media and use crayon or oil stick over or under the paint as I like the freedom and movement drawing can create. Storm Rising was a series which gave a further boost to my painting career. In 2001, my series of small works on paper were spotted by a designer who had the contract supplying contemporary artworks for the New Greenslopes Private Hospital. This led to a contract for 25 paintings and some prints. Each floor had a different theme to make it easier for patients and visitors alike to tr navigate their way through the building. I was given the freedom to create artworks for underwater, lagoon, coastal, hinterland and outback themes, which were easily identified by the colour palette. It was a very satisfying commission as there were no artistic constraints and I could paint in my style yet still sticking to their brief. Several years later, I received further commissions for their new extension. To this day, I still receive so much positive feedback from this job, from staff, visitors and the patients themselves. Hospitals can be an unsettling time for everyone and the art has given them something to ponder over or to relieve the tedium of waiting rooms. When I travel, I like to carry a diary, a, a, a sketchbook, that is my form of diary. So they're just quick little sketches. Then I have these little zigzag books I quite often carry with me. And they're just little strips of paper. And uh, just to they make nice little books, they fold up like this, they're easy to carry and I make covers for them and uh, they make, make nice little gifts for people and they're an, another little memory of, of my travels and, and other, other people's, you know, they might have been to some of these places too. My dream came true when my husband and I visited Africa, camping in Tanzania and Kenya. I love sketching the animals and aside from enjoying the African experience, this was right up my alley. Very quick pen sketches were the order of the day as they always move just when you started to draw. But from the safety of an open vehicle, I could watch for longer stays if time allowed. And then I painted as soon as I was back home in my studio. I'm always inspired by mountains and my series All About Mountains had a lot more detail and symbolic marks. References to man's footstep on the landscape, destruction, development, it was more of a social commentary. Nothing like a major competition to make me look a bit harder and assess my work, be it a sculpture, a drawing or a painting. Ink drawings on paper of the devil's marbles in the Northern Territory were the result of being accepted in one such exhibition and I aim for bold and minimal. 
I enjoyed the white primed backgrounds and added collage pieces of my torn paintings. This one is Iron Range and Red Tail Black Cockatoo. Uh, when I saw this piece, it's a piece of old farming equipment, just discarded. It looked to me just like a mountain range. So that's the horizon there. We have good old barbed wire and just a piece of fencing wire. And a well-known bushy looked at this and said to me, you know, they don't make fences like this anymore. You'll never get another piece like that. Black Saturday. Five one metre panels inspired by the aftermath of the Black Saturday fires. So compelling and confronting with such strong images nightly on our TV news. I was moved to paint this entry for the National Wind Landscape Prize. I wasn't selected. No surprises there, but I had to have a go. The gallery I exhibited with had had a fire in the adjoining building the previous year and I had salvaged the burnt fence palings, so now they were put to good use. I wrote the facts and figures, the towns burnt and the loss of lives on the palings. The burnt ends added to the drama. I won the People's Choice Award with two of the panels at the Noosa Regional Gallery the following year. It now hangs in the Nillumbuck Council Chambers, the area that was badly affected by those fires. I did a bushfire series, a bush close by, the, the fires came in quite close, so that was rather, I was rather compelled to do those. So charcoal, of course, in keeping with the, the medium. So I did lots of small ones, just very minimal uh, of the burnt trees that were left behind. There was a lot of ash, there was no undergrowth, it was all burnt and uh, this was my result. So I also did some large canvases which you will see in some of the still photos. So mixed media, a little bit of crayon and oil pastel and charcoal on cotton rag. A camping holiday throughout the outback is all the more reason to sketch and gather material. I have always loved the outdoors and over the years we have camped throughout the Kimberley, the Red Centre, the Flinders Ranges and our coastal areas. In Karajini in the Pilbara, so intense was the strength of the gorges when the sun hit them, I found myself just painting the reflections in the water below the cliffs. Probably the hardest I find to paint is lush green. I don't really do green very well. The marks of the desert and the scrubbiness of the bush just speak to me. Diving with the whale sharks was on my bucket list and after the Pilbara, West to Ningaloo Reef, that's just what I did. I wanted to capture this moment and the lovely soft nature and spots of this beautiful creature on canvas in a very subtle way. In 2018, I was lucky to be chosen as one of 15 watercolour artists chosen to represent Australia in the International Fabriano in Aquarello watercolour exhibition in Fabriano, Italy. Fabriano is where the first watercolour paper was made in 1276 first from cotton rag until the plague put an end to that and they used wood pulp from then on. Artists from 80 countries throughout the world participate in the exhibition, a convention where 15 artists from each country are selected to exhibit and represent their country. My abstract aftermath was selected. Over 1,000 artists and visitors descend on this historic town for five days each year. The criteria is to promote watercolour with no boundaries, to encourage the growth and development of personal style and sharing knowledge across all cultures. It's not a competition. It was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Artwork was displayed in their respective country groups, all paintings were the same size and slotted into pre-prepared mounts. One had a map to follow a trail throughout the old town from monasteries, churches, museums to libraries in the university where they were all displayed. Old frescoes lined the walls and precious gilt and carvings were everywhere. We could make paper in the traditional way, go to a seminar, watch others or just paint. 
My husband came along as he's a photographer of note and enjoyed the experience as well. I went to a workshop where the tutor from Italy sloshed paint vigorously and freely, not worrying about frescoed walls only metres away. Another demonstrated in a prayer room and we had to balance our work on the narrow backs of pews. I had to pinch myself to realise what a special place and event this was. Hundreds could follow demonstrations as artists painted and their progress was projected onto a large cinema screen for all to see. In 2019, I was chosen again for Italy. This time I submitted something one could identify with, our Australian desert boulders. The following year, in 2020, my lagoon waterhole was selected. Once again, there were a huge variety of genres and styles, from traditional landscapes, portraits, still life, street scenes, semi-abstract and abstract works. People thronged the piazza where abstract artists released their energy. Artists perched on stone walls with their plein air kits. Others sat on the cobblestones and painted or just watched. An endless roll of paper was rolled out for artists to participate in if they wished to and add their brushwork. The leader of our Australian contingent decided Australia needed a higher watercolour profile. So Wynne Vogel from Brisbane founded the Australian Watercolour Muster, which was held in the Cairns Regional Gallery and hoped that destination would tra attract international artists. But of course, COVID prevented that. My entry that year was Jetty Reflections. In 2022, Fabriano in Acruello was open to the world again, but less people traveled to Italy due to border restrictions. My abstract, Aftermath Reflections was selected. The past years I have tended to paint landscapes from a bird's eye view, from an aerial perspective. The meandering lines from roads or rivers or salty reflections in a salt pan all appealed to me. These I painted during times of drought and now we have the floods. Before that, bushfires. Floods, as devastating as they are, have been the subject of more paintings. Lines of a broken riverbank or fence, fallen trees, flooded paddocks, submerged homes. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to receive commissions, often for hotels, more hospitals and corporate clients. They are always a challenge and as long as they are prepared for my interpretation, after a meeting and seeing the space, then all ends well. You can see the influence of John Olson's mural, Five Bells, for the Sydney Opera House in this one, my underwater dip ditch for an architect's boardroom. I had been painting the aftermath of the bushfires in my locality with the blackened trees and the burnt undergrowth reduced to ash. Very minimal, almost calligraphic on a prime canvas. This was closely followed by a trip to Japan in winter in the North Island of Hokkaido, which was snowbound. This to me presented the same landscape of bare trees, minimal, no understory, snow. They were the same marks. Then COVID reared its ugly head and changed our lifestyle. The constraints of lockdowns allowed time in my studio to reflect and challenge myself. A solo landscape in isolation was the result. As I try to challenge myself to push further, I'm still attracted by what I observe. This year with the flooding rain, our local creek became my focus. I had watched it start with a trickle until it changed its path. In my studio, I had been painting on every sheet or piece of paper I had. Eventually I realized I have a show here. The gallery that represents me is a large warehouse space, so I had room to display all these works. Hence, a show was born. Titled, it started with a trickle, based around the flooded creeks and inland rivers. It was a hard subject to get away from. Looking back to my very first exhibition, I realized now how I have developed and established my signature style over many years. I may have wandered in different directions over time, 
and got a bit lazy, but I would still like to explore and challenge my art practice as best I can. Finally, this way, the winner of the Pamela Whitlock Memorial Award, for which I am very grateful. Sponsors and philanthropists are such an important and essential part of art awards and the progression of the arts for the regional galleries and help to grow the cultural landscape. Without them, there would be few exhibitions. So thank you.